All right. So I'm not exactly sure what to call this. I don't know if this is going to be a series. I don't know if this is going to be called like engineering journal something, but I'm recording this on my phone. So, cause I was going to use my, um, uh, camera or actually my parents camera, but, uh, the SD card wasn't working tech, um, tech issues. So fitting. So yeah. That's the introduction and let's get into the video. So since Apple doesn't know how to make a button that lets you go from rear view to front view mirror, um, mirror <laughs> camera, um, I'm just gonna do this in intervals. So I am making a project where I make a telegraph. I already made a prototype, which if you see in my bookshelf is right here. I can actually give you a little showcase of this. Um, yeah. So, it's the other way around. So what it is, is it has a, um, like a coil right here. I don't, I guess it's to magnify the current and the current. It actually might've been to make an electromagnet. I don't know, my dog's getting mad. Okay. Hopefully there won't be any more <laughs> interruptions. So I got my dog to start, um, to stop barking. Um, okay. So I think this coil, I thought it was used for, um, I didn't know much about tele um, telegraphy before, the, um, before this. So <laughs> I thought this coil, um, this coil was to like amplify the current or something. Um, not current, but like, uh, voltage, transmission, etc. But, uh, I think it was actually just meant to be the electromagnet, which I am incorporating into the new design, which I will touch on in a second. So you can see I have the little clicker here. Um, use a paper clip and two brads and under it I have a little um, piece of wire I just took this from like an insulated thing so it's very like um, scrappy as you can see right there because um, it's not just one cable it's not solid core <laughs> um, so yeah I have that soldered to this brad right here which that goes into here and this has a little wire that goes um, oh yeah this wire goes down here um, to the clicker and this one goes into the battery pack, which I can show you right here. This is just a two, um, double A battery pack and it produces like five volts, I think. And for, at least from what I saw on my multimeter. So yeah, like five or six volts, which doesn't like, make that much sense cause it's 1.5 volts, but I digress. And so that goes into here and this would be the transmitter since this is wired. Um, it's only with it's like with two wires, there'd be the transmitting wire and the receiving wire. So each one has a transmit, um, transmitter, each one has a receiver. So each one of these are actually like analog transceivers, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, and it has a cool thing right here. It says, I'm made on earth by humans. So that was the prototype I made. Um, I didn't make another one because this is the prototype, but it's pretty scrappy. And you can see um, what I was gonna do instead of using like an electromagnet to do the, um, the, the clacking, the uh, the clicking, uh, I was going to use just like an LED. And you can see on the bottom, I have the LED soldered onto a resistor because they need those. Um, but yeah, and just put that away. And yeah, I got this multimeter um, uh, a little less than a month ago. Uh, my grandfa uh, grandfather gave it to me since he's an electrician um, and I want to be an electrical engineer. He thought that would be kind of a nice thing to have, which I should have had by now, but yeah. So these are the um, uh, stuff that I, ha that I got from Lowe's the other day for the whole tele uh, telegraphy project. I got these two um, boards. I think they're like a two by six or something. Uh, two by six by four. So pretty long. And we have like a miter saw, so I'm just gonna cut them up into pieces. And each piece will have like, I think one piece will have like a battery and like the electromagnet, and then another piece will have like a little clicker. I'm getting some like inspiration from this one uh, website I saw, it's pretty cool. And you'd have two of them, so you can communicate back and forth. Eventually I wanna make a um, wireless one, but for now I'm just sticking with a wired one for the first actual tele um, telegraph. And then down here I have some uh, sheet metal. This is just um, galvanized steel, which I also picked up from Lowe's. It needs to be washed. Uh, it's kind of gross right now from fingerprints and just being in a store. Uh, 
So yeah, what I'm gonna do is cut that up. And I didn't have snips before this because I wasn't working with metal, um, but I got some snips. Uh, I didn't have the money to get like the left, right, and middle one. So I got this big one that just like cuts straight since I'm not really doing many curves, hopefully. Um, and you can just see like it looks just, like, just like that. And it's made for like, uh, for like pretty thick gauge metal, which is what I'm working with. Oh yeah, that is 22 gauge by the way. And then I got some nails for the electromagnet. Uh, yeah, so I got these four inch nails, got some three inch nails. And also found, um, I bought those ones, but I found some of these ones in my basement. Uh, and they have some different varieties of sizes. They have three inch. The only problem with these ones, they have like little like divots in them. Um, but I could use this two and a half inch. Thing. And you can see them all falling out there. I'll clean that up later. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> this is a metal box that I made a metal shop. Uh, I'm keeping some of the nails in it. That's the four inch one. That's the three inch one. Um, just for testing, I have some like coins, um, coins and <laughs> some dead batteries. But I made this one, um, this little box, it's pretty cool. And here is my 3D printer. It's currently undergoing maintenance like most 3D printers have to do. Um, I messed up the, uh, I can just show you. Let's turn that on. I messed up the temperature sensor and I think it, and as the, t um, the temperature, uh, the nozzle was trying to heat up, uh, <laughs> it couldn't read the temperature because the temperature sensor messed up because I was trying to unclog the nozzle and I think I broke something, i.e. the temperature sensor. So it kept heating up and heating up and ended up frying out the board from overcurrent. So you can see it is currently reading negative 14 degrees Celsius. So I do not want to heat that up until I have a new temperature sensor installed. If I'm not able to do that, which you actually can buy those on Amazon, uh, then I'm just going to have to get a new one of these, just like temperature block things. So speaking of Amazon, <laughs> I need to get the rest of the components on Amazon. I actually have like a little shopping cart that I made, uh, like copper and like some battery packs and yeah. And also, um, I drew out the, uh, schematic for what I actually think it's going to look like. And it's really simple. I just took inspiration from some other schematics and just made it really simple. So I will okay. show you that. So, <laughs> I have to read. I had to redo this clip because I, I showed my contact information and I don't really want to do that. So I'm just gonna skip over that page, um, real quick. So yeah, but I got this little MIT book, uh, from their actual MIT bookstore. It's pretty cool. They have a really nice bookstore, by the way. Um, you can see here I was learning about. Uh, I was doing this one course called Nanti Tetris, and I was learning about different logic gates and stuff, and it's just really cool. But if I go over on here, um, yep, here it is. So you can see that's the first one, the first telegraph. That's the second one. And they each have a five, uh, five volt supply. And um, yeah, so this is like when I was starting to actually sketch out how it would look. So there's, those would be like the two batteries. Uh, but I will <laughs> finish sketching that later. So you can see right here, it has the power supply and then it goes into the key. And which would be represented by this, but it'd be nicer than this because this is kind of scrappy because it's prototype. It doesn't have to be expensive. And then it would go over to here and have a transmission line that would go over into this, uh, elect um, would go over to, into the other actual telegraph. And then the, the each telegraph has their own coil, which is a nail, uh, two nails actually, one shorter nail that has coil on it. Uh, which you can see right here, that's the electromagnet, uh, hence these two lines in the coil. And then another uh, a nail that holds up a, um, holds down actually a piece of sheet metal. And when this electromagnet uh, gets current, then for like a split second, this will come down and tap because, you know, ferrous metals get attracted to mag uh, mag magnets because of iron. And then um, that goes into the ground of this one. This one does the same. And so, yeah, I think it should work because they're all going to like ground. So it seems like they're all connected. I might need to do like some sort of trickery with that, like connect some grounds um, if it doesn't work, but it seems like it's a pretty solid circuit. Um, you guys can tell me in the comments, but yeah. Also in the back of this book, uh, I have some cool stuff. I decided it'd be kind of useful to have um, uh, some little, like a key for uh, 
some simple electric stuff. So I have a little Darlington transistor, which I actually use a, a pretty decent amount with the PCBs that I make. Uh, hence this one right here on the Tri Mark One from the CAS program. I am the founder of the CAS program. If you haven't checked um, the CAS program out on Instagram, you should definitely do that. There's a transist Darlington transistor right there that actually controls the CRT channel. The Trimark One has been uh, retired <laughs> due to how crappy I made it. Like, look at this, and look at this, like those resistors and the SD card holder. Mm -mm. So I'm redoing it. I'm actually making the Trimark Two. It's gonna be a lot better, hopefully. We got like things like AC voltage, you can see like the sine wave, uh, DC voltage, which I actually used in the telegraph circuit, um, control voltage source, uh, which is like, I think that's a little bit less used, that symbol. Same with control current um, source. Uh, I might be wrong, single cell battery um, interrupter, which I was actually using that in another circuit that I was making. Uh, simple stuff like diodes, capacitors, inductors, resistors, uh, other stuff like P-channel JFETs, uh, laser diodes, which are pretty cool, and a shock key diode. And I've actually used shock key diodes, um, diodes before. Um, actually, I think I used a shock key diode in that circuit. I think it's on the back. No, no, that's in another part. But I digress. Also, I decided to write down the truth tables for some of the things I was working with. So you've got stuff like an and, or, um, exclusive or, not, um, a multiplexer, um, an abbreviated multiplexer, um, an AND multiplexer OR, which is a programmable circuit, um, a demultiplexer, um, a multiplexer four-way, uh, which is just like crazy circuit stuff. I think that's actually the, might be the abbreviated version. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but yeah, that's what I have in the journal. Okay, I thought this would be cool to mention. Uh, that's my name, hence my channel. Uh, <laughs> but I thought this would be cool to mention. Uh, for school, I am in an elective class called Material Design and Engineering Tech, or MDEP. And for my class assignment, which uh, I have to submit by like October the 20th, uh, this video probably should be uh, made by then um, and posted. But we had to make a sample website on uh, uh, Google Sites. I didn't even know that Google Sites was a thing before then, before now, or that you could even make a website with Google. I thought that was just like exclusive to website builders like Squarespace, Wix. I didn't know Google got their hands on that um, field. And I've practiced website design um, on uh, with coding in C Sharp and, um, not C Sharp, <laughs> definitely not. Um, uh, Mm, oh my gosh, I'm lost for words. Wait just a second, I'm gonna come back. <laughs> I didn't uh, mean to say uh, C Sharp. So C Sharp, HTML, not in that order. I actually learned HTML first, then I touched a little bit on C Sharp and I haven't even touched JavaScript. I really need to get on that, but school has been in the way. <laughs> so um, this is what I've been doing with my website and you can see cast program stuff right there. I can actually go ahead and present it. This is a preview of what it actually would look like. Um, so engineering, you have to put engineering design journal on it. And then I put my name, John Owens, and you can press this. So I'm a student at Northern Burlington High School and a freshman in the 2021 to 2022 material design and engineering technology class. I'm very driven as a hobbyist, engineer, creator, student, and amateur rocketeer. Um, I'm experienced in 3D modeling with Fusion 360, and I learn. Um, yeah, <laughs> and I enjoy learning subjects such as physics, um, engineering, and math, among others. That's a picture of my face, and uh, you can see I did like a little about page on cul um, culture, aeronautical, space systems, CAS program. Um, had some little headers, and this is actually pretty cool. I put my design process for this nose cone that I built. Um, I actually used that black spray paint right there for this. But uh, yeah, I did like a little design process for that. If I can actually even grab it. And you can see this little like uh, design and some stuff just cause it looks cool. <laughs> uh, actually doesn't help the design at all um, for weight or anything, but I just think it looks nice. And uh, it's a subsonic rocket. So you can see that it is tapered off and it is like smoother. Um, actually should be a little bit smoother than this, but I kind of want to have like a edge. So there that is. And so this is what it looked like drawing. It's just a really simple photo. Um, 
I didn't get that. I didn't actually draw that much because it's a nose cone. It's pretty simple. This is when I was modeling it in Fusion 360. Uh, this is when I was creating it on this 3D printer beside, um, before it decided to bum out on me. And uh, this is when I was wet sanding it. Uh, and this is the results, which is, I was holding that up there. And you can actually see in this photo, it was still under maintenance at the time because I didn't even know it was wrong with my printer until recently. Um, but I, um, and I have some contact information right there. Uh, but yeah, that's it. And this site's just kind of like to show like what I can do, what I've been doing, um, and whether it's stuff for people that want to employ me in the future or, uh, also for this assignment and for any friends or family that want to see it. So that's the website that I made. Okay. This video is nearing to an end, but I wanted to touch on this subject because I thought it was pretty cool before I ended it. Um, I'm probably not going to edit this video too much because I want to get it posted now. And also, I'm not the biggest fan of editing, but I might do some of that stuff in the future. All right. So this is a seven pound CO2 cylinder that I bought um, a few months ago. And this is for the CAS program. Uh, this is, <laughs> I guess you could say a business expense, but not really. Uh, so uh, it's just a generic um, CO2 cylinder. I bought it refurbished. So it's not like crappy or anything. and crappy or anything. It's made of steel. Hence the nice sound it makes. And uh, it has a little uh, knob up here. If I had the money, I'd use, i get like a pressure valve or whatever they call it to actually see the PSI of it. But um, I'm not too worried about that right now. Uh, and also has this uh, nozzle because I am using for my CO2 ejection system for the parachute on my rocket. Uh, most people use pyro charges, which is what they call them. They're just a uh, little... Uh, um, like things of black powder and plastic um, containers and when they use an electric match, uh, match on them they ignite um, igniting uh, uh, and all that hot gas that's created sends out the parachute on a rocket through the top of its nose cone or however the person sees fit there's also mechanical systems uh, but the system I found the most interesting uh, was CO2 one because of its reusability and two, because it seems like a challenge. While mechanical, um, while mechanical ejection systems on small model rockets like I'm doing, like a meter long uh, model rocket, is not a bad idea. It's actually a really good idea and um, comes with some neat design challenges. I thought that CO2 working with an actual substance uh, would be really interesting. Uh, it costs more because I'm not using servos. Um, but I think this is a lot cooler. So what? Um, so I'm using reusable CO2 cylinders, and people have done this before. Um, uh, but they, but I haven't seen one person use reusable CO2 cylinders, and I didn't even know reusable CO2 cylinders existed until I looked them up. And you can get reusable CO2 cylinders. These are used for airsoft, and uh. <laughs> I had to like look at the design of airsoft guns just to, like to make like a thing for them. And I made like a 3D model and everything. Um, and maybe I'll show that later. Uh, but actually, I can't show you this from, uh, right now. Uh, this is pretty cool. Because if I take the nose cone off, uh, this right here is actually the piston. It's really long, I know. Um, this is the piston for the CO2 ejection system. So what happens is that I have my CO2 um, cylinder thing right here. And you can see it has two valves at the top, uh, one right here, which can be pushed down and uh, which actually lets out the CO2, one in the back, which takes in and it can also be pushed down. And what happens with that is I would, um, if I was to do this, I would, uh, it's kind of hard to do with one hand, but I would push on this, push all the way back until this moves back and then that opens the valve. And then I would do like that um, for like a sec. Actually, no, I would already have this open. I would push on this and then I would leave it on there for about mm, three to four seconds until I think it's all filled up. This is has a 12 gram capacity. So yeah. Um, and then after that, uh, I would take this off, um, close this up and put this away. Uh, for storage and 
I can use this because this is armed and it's probably pretty hot because it had all the pressurized gas. But when this releases with 800 PSI, it's pretty darn cold. Um, and if I set down the camera real quick, I can actually show you what it looks like inside. So you can see it has a little gasket right there um, to keep the pressure. And that's the bottom. You can see the little thing right there. I actually 3D modeled this and got like the measurements on the inside and outside. That was a painful experience. Uh, and here's the other side. You can see they use brass for this. I don't know if it's because um, of strength. Well, I mean, this is stainless steel, but I'm maybe it's just because of the parts and stuff. I don't know. Um, but yeah. And so I would have this connected to a solenoid valve. And I have my solenoid valve somewhere around here. And uh, I actually made a pressurizer, which what it does is it um, pushes on the top of this with enough force from springs. And I actually have the springs over here next to some wood filler. And uh, when that happens, it goes through a set of tubes. Um, and then the tubes are led into a solenoid valve and the solenoid valve is electric. So when I give current to it from the flight computer, um, when it detects like like after Apogee, uh, which is when you're supposed to deploy the parachute, um, then uh, it will open the valve, letting out the CO2, and then the CO2 will go up through this hole, and it will, this is gonna be inside the rocket, so it's all like contained. Um, I actually have the Casper thing right here. <laughs> uh, so that will go up, and that will hit the top of the nose cone, and, um, yeah, that will send off that, and the parachute will be right on here, so it'll go completely off. The, um, the nose gun's going to be attached to the actual rocket body, so it's not going to be lost. And that's it. That's my CO2 ejection system. Okay. That's the video. Um, <laughs> I think that was pretty comprehensive. Um, it was supposed to be just about the tel um, telegraph, but I haven't done that much with that so far. I made a, a prototype. I've drawn it out halfway. Um, I've drawn the circuit, not the actual design, uh, which I need to do. Um, and then also, uh, I got the components besides the stuff I need to get on Amazon. But not everybody has copper coil laying around with their house. <laughs> besides electrical engineers, which I should have that, and I am so embarrassed, but I'm just kidding. Um, so, got background noise. <laughs> uh, so, I will see you in the next video, and hopefully by then I'll have some more updates on the telegraph situation. And, um, hope you enjoyed this first video. See ya.